Hello and welcome friends, myself Dr. Smiley Pruthi, I am national level faculty teaching biochemistry. In this video, I am going to discuss a few questions from PGI Chandigarh exam which were asked yesterday in your exam. So let's get started. The first question is regulatory enzymes of glycolysis are regulatory enzymes of glycolysis are hexokinase, PFK1 that is phosphofructokinase 1 and pyruvate kinase. These three enzymes are regulatory enzymes of glycolysis. Let me tell you various things here which are frequently asked questions. If they ask you regulatory enzymes or irreversible steps of glycolysis, then it is same question and these three which I have told you that is hexokinase, PFK1, phosphofructokinase 1 and pyruvate kinase. These three are regulatory or irreversible enzymes. If they ask you rate limiting enzyme of glycolysis, then you will say PFK1. If they ask you flux generating step of glycolysis, then you will say hexokinase. If they ask you first committed step of glycolysis, then you will say PFK1 phosphofructokinase 1. And if they ask you substrate level phosphorylation steps of glycolysis, they are phosphoglycerate kinase or PG kinase and pyruvate kinase. So these are various questions asked on the enzymes of glycolysis. And one more question I remember that if they ask you which enzyme of glycolysis can use inorganic phosphate, then your answer will be glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is the only enzyme of glycolysis which can use inorganic phosphate, right? Coming to the next question, UDP glucose is used for, UDP glucose is used in glycogen synthesis also, in galactose metabolism also, in heparin synthesis also, bilirubin metabolism also and ganglioside synthesis also. Answer is all to this question. See here. UDP glucose is the key intermediate mainly in carbohydrate metabolism and it is used in galactose metabolism which is a monosaccharide. It is used for disaccharide metabolism also for example making sucrose, making lactose. Then in glycogen metabolism it is used in GAG synthesis that is heteropolysaccharides, glycosaminoglycans here also it is used. Then in glycolipid or ganglioside or cerebroside formation, we require UDP glucose as well as UDP galactose. And then in bilirubin metabolism also it is used. See the structure of UDP glucose. The structure is, this is uracil nitrogenous base. This is sugar, ribose sugar. This is two phosphates attached here at number fifth position of the sugar. And this is glucose attached. So the components are ribose sugar, pyrophosphate, glucose and uracil nitrogenous base. So we can say it is a pyrimidine nucleotide bound to a saccharide by its terminal phosphate. So let's see how UDP glucose is involved in bilirubin metabolism. You know how conjugation occurs that bilirubin gets converted to bilirubin monoglucuronide and then diglucuronide basically glucuronic acid we are adding and to add glucuronic acid we need this UDP glucuronic acid and the name of enzyme is UDP glucuronyl transferase. In second step also to add another glucuronic acid same reaction is done by same enzyme. So answer to this question you know it is for glycogen synthesis also galactose metabolism also UDP glucose required heparin, bilirubin, ganglioside. Heparin is a heteropolysaccharide that is glycosaminoglycan. So let's see how it is involved in heparin synthesis. Heparin is made up of repeated units of l iduronic acid and D-glucosamine and l iduronic acid is obtained from d glucuronic acid and you know in the formation of glucuronic acid we need UDP glucose. So you can see here synthesis of l iduronic acid occurs after d glucuronic acid is incorporated by the enzyme epimerase. By the enzyme epimerase, this d glucuronic acid is converted to l iduronic acid. One more question I remember here, UDP glucose is not used in, this question was asked. 
on options are hmp galactose metabolism glycogen metabolism uronic acid pathway in which pathway it is not involved it is not involved in hmp pathway otherwise it is involved in galactose glycogen and also in uronic acid pathway so next question which enzyme has proof reading function in pcr options are pfu polymerase tac polymerase thomas thermophilus thomas flavis and t7 polymerase answer to this question is pfu polymerase this thing is not given in your books not even in latest edition of harper this is an additional point in pcr and i have taken the answer from the latest journal papers so see i will tell you this extra point about this pcr technique you know this tac polymerase thomas aquaticus polymerase is used as a polymerase that is for dna synthesis in this technique we are using this enzyme we cannot use the normal polymerase here because we are using high temperatures in this technique pcr for denaturation of the dna we use this high temperature and a normal polymerase a normal enzyme will get denatured in this high temperature that's why we take this enzyme from a bacteria thermos aquaticus this bacteria can survive in boiling waters so any enzyme of this bacteria can withstand high temperatures that's why we use this special pcr but now for this special thing that is error free pcr usually the stack polymerase is not having proof reading activity proof reading means correction can occur during the synthesis of this dna so this so tac polymerase when it is not having proof reading activity then it is bound to have so many errors in this kind of pcr but for such pcrs where proof reading or fidelity is very critical there we have to use some error free pcr and and polymerase with an active 3 to 5 exonuclease activity that is having proof reading and most of the uh, commercially available available polymerases they don't have this 3 to 5 exonuclease activity so we can say they are proof reading deficient now for having error free pcr so first requirement is we will we should be having a polymerase which is having 3 to 5 exonuclease proof reading activity and any type of deoxynucleoside triphosphate pool imbalance should be avoided that is all the deoxyribonucleotides should be available that is adenine thymine cytosine and, and guanine these all should be available in sufficient amounts then short synthesis time should be used low deoxynucleotide triphosphate concentration should be used low enzyme concentration should be used low magnesium chloride should be used and the reaction conditions should be buffered to a ph around 6 only then we can get error free pcr now for this enzyme the polymerase having 3 to 5 exonuclease activity this is pfu dna polymerase a latest thing so see here what is this pfu dna polymerase this is taken from hyperthermophilic archaeon that is pyrococcus furiosus this enzyme is having superior thermostability and proof reading properties also as compared to dna polymerase and unlike dna polymerase it possess this 3 to 5 3 to 5 dash exonuclease proof reading activity but one point which is lacking in this enzyme is that this enzyme is not having good speed this enzyme works slowly obviously if this enzyme is doing proof reading along with the dna synthesis obviously this enzyme will be working slowly so the best thing is what we can do is that we can take both these enzymes together in a pcr that is tac polymerase because it will give the speed to the reaction and pfu polymerase because this will give proof reading to the reaction so best is to use both of them so therefore your answer is pfu polymerase for this question now next question components or genes involved in risk complex the answer is drosha dicer microrna this technique is rna interference technique so i'll tell you about this technique on next slide so now see here this red colored is nuclear membrane which i have made so outside is cytoplasm and this is nucleus here in nucleus we have dna this is primary micro rna gene present here with the help of enzyme rna polymerase transcription will occur and which rna polymerase is involved here rna polymerase type 2 is involved here this technique is there in eukaryotes only so i have made a eukaryotic cell here 
So, RNA polymerase 2 will transcribe this primary microRNA gene to form its mRNA. So, like DNA gets converted to RNA with the help of transcription. So, this is transcription occurring with the help of RNA polymerase type 2 and this we have got primary microRNA. Primary microRNA we have got. This is cap here and this is 3 dash tail here. This is 5 dash cap here. So, this kind of structure is made. Now, drosha nuclease will come here and will cut this primary microRNA at two places this and this place. Drosha nuclease, it is an endonuclease, it can cut anywhere in between. So, at these two particular sites, it will be cutting and we will be getting this kind of structure. And now this is known as pre-miRNA means pre-microRNA. So, before the action of Drosha, it was primary microRNA. Now, it is pre-microRNA. This pre-microRNA can escape through the nuclear pore. This is nuclear pore shown here. That is X potent 5 here. Via this nuclear pore, this pre-microRNA is coming out in the cytoplasm. So, we have got this pre-microRNA in the cytoplasm. This is pre-microRNA. Now, in cytoplasm, we have dicer nuclease here. Dicer nuclease will make a cut here. Again, dicer is an endonuclease. It will make a cut in the RNA. It will make a cut here so that we are getting a double-stranded microRNA duplex we have got. So, it is a kind of microRNA duplex we have got. So, we have got two strands of RNA. And these two strands of microRNA are not required, only one strand is required. So, strand selection will be done and only one of the strand will be selected here. So, now I have got single stranded microRNA. The single stranded microRNA will be attached to various proteins and this is known as RISC, R-I-S-C. The full form is RNA induced silencing complex, RNA induced silencing complex because this kind of RNA attached to proteins is required in silencing technique or RNA interference technique. We can take this technique uh, in detail in another video. So, you can see the question again, components or genes involved in risk complex, risk is RNA induced silencing complex. We have seen Rosha endonuclease present inside the nucleus. Dicer endonuclease present inside the cytoplasm and microRNA is involved in this technique. Also, siRNA is also involved in this technique that is silencing RNA or small interfering RNA. Next question, which of the following is non-reducing sugar? Glucose, maltose, isomaltose, sucrose, trihalose. Let me tell you monosaccharides and disaccharides. All the monosaccharides are reducing because all the monosaccharides have their functional group which is free. Monosaccharide means a single carbohydrate unit present. So, obviously the functional group will be free. So, all monosaccharides are reducing. What about disaccharides? In case of disaccharides, only two disaccharides which are commonly asked, they are non-reducing that is non-reducing disaccharides are sucrose and trihalose. Reducing disaccharides are maltose, isomaltose, lactose, they all are reducing. So, answer to this question is sucrose and trihalose, they are non-reducing. Glucose is a monosaccharide, so reducing maltose and isomaltose, they are disaccharides, they are reducing. Next question, EPO integrated in HDL is, let me tell you, in HDL, EPO, A, C and E are incorporated. EPO, A has a role in the activation of enzyme LCAT that is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. But EPO, C and E, they are incorporated in the structure of HDL during their synthesis, but they have no role in HDL. HDL will give EPO, C and EPO, E to chylomicron and VLDL so that they are converted to the remnants that is chylomicron will form chylomicron remnant and VLDL will form VLDL remnant. So, answer to this question is EPOE1 is incorporated and also EPOE is incorporated in the structure of HDL. Which are omega-6 fatty acids? Omega-6 fatty acid is linoleic acid, arachidonic acid and also 
gamma linolenic acid so these are omega 6 fatty acids and also you can learn omega 3 fatty acids omega 3 fatty acid is first is dha also known as sulfonic acid the full form of dha is docosa hexa enoic acid second is alpha linolenic acid third is timnodonic acid so these three are omega 3 fatty acids that is sulfonic timnodonic and alpha linolenic but omega 6 category contains linoleic arachidonic and gamma linolenic acid let me also tell you one extra point here in case of omega 3 category alpha linolenic is the precursor that means if we are getting alpha linolenic in the diet then other two fatty acids can be synthesized from alpha linolenic acid and in case of omega 6 category linoleic acid is the precursor that means if we are getting linoleic acid in diet then other two fatty acids can be synthesized and if they ask you a question out of linoleic and alpha linolenic which is most essential then you will say linoleic acid is most essential because it will form arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid has a very important function of leukotriene and prostaglandin synthesis. So these were the few questions which I have got from students recall and if you know more questions which were asked in PJ Chandigarh exam then do post them under this video and best wishes for your future exams. Thanks for watching.